Lights in the distance, a forgotten town. No, no, no way. Oh, I'm on my way, so stand on the edge of the edge of the world.
It's all about humanity.
Good evening, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope you felt the hype up. Welcome to the first season of Wombo Esports Championship Series. I'm here joined today with Quinn Stone for our first match for the tournament of NA, NA Rams versus the Night Owls. Good evening, Quinn Stone. Sorry. <laughs> A little nervous. Good evening. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be here. I'm really glad that uh, this is happening. I'm glad you've invited me onto the desk. It's wonderful. I'm privileged to be here. Uh, how are you doing tonight? So HXC. I am a tad bit nervous, but I appreciate your energy. Uh, how do you feel about the revamp? We've we started things up as Wombo Esports. What are your thoughts on on how things are looking so far? We have six teams this time around. Last time we had uh, eight teams. Um, I think we have most people that are from the previous season, but we do have a couple new people. So just at a very quick high level, what are your thoughts? So uh, to inform the chat here, uh, you know, as you said, there's going to be two uh two less teams so it's gonna be six teams here uh for this wonderful league of ours uh so the the season's gonna be shorter as a result and so that's gonna be a lot less stressful on our uh on our players uh for everyone involved you know less stress 12 weeks max i believe versus the 19 week season that we had last season season zero uh we've grown we've really you know really thought about you know the pros and cons of last season what we could do better and so now we're going to have two conferences. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And now that we have two conferences, this is, you know, this is game one. And so it's going to split it up. It's slightly hybridized. Hybridized, I guess that's the word. Uh, you know, hybridized schedule versus a, a standard one round, one round robin or a double round robin. But, uh, you know, I, I think we've really revamped, you know, the rule set. I think we've done, I think, the best we can. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited for the rest of this season. Sweet. Awesome. Um, so just a reminder for those folks here, um, as I stated, today is going to be our first game to the tournament. Our next game scheduled will be on Tuesday at 9 o'clock p.m. EST will be Yo Plays versus the Coconut Crabs. And then the last match for week one um, will actually be our uh <laughs> teams against each other um yes. the knights versus the glaze non-human primates so best of luck to you in the rift sir <laughs> and please be gentle <laughs> um with yeah. that wow. um some additional other housekeeping things um as some of you may have noticed we do unfortunately have some subs it's been a little bit of a tough week with labor day weekend and everything um, Elemental Lux will be subbing on any Rams for Blue Banana, the Banana Banthy, yeah. And then uh, for Night Owls, um, Phantom Gamer and Achievements 21 will be subbed by Benj and Sweet Smell of Suck. Um, so kind of a little bit of a bummer that we can't get um, the core team together. Again, like I said, rough time to get everyone's schedules. Um, so we won't really able to see, unfortunately, the true potential of the teams. Um, but Quillen, maybe give me some of your thoughts of, um, you know, what maybe what we can get from these teams from today's match. So, uh, you know, looking look at the teams here, uh, with the last minute sub, the NA Rams are going to have to take a ban penalty for both games. So that's going to shake up how uh, these, these teams are going to look. But um, looking, you know, looking at the rosters, you know, hypothetically, uh, you know, let, let's say looking at the players in a vacuum and, you know, how they, you know, we, since we have not seen them mesh together yet, uh, I think NA Rams is looking like to be one of the teams that are going to be starting leading the pack. In my personal opinion, I think that's, that's what we're going to see here. But, uh, the United Owls ain't no slouches. I think, you know, uh, they're going to be a team that's going to get better and better every week. Uh, it's just at what point are they going to hit their stride? And so uh, let's, I would love to see, you know, really, you know, both teams really run, you know, run at each other full speed and really uh, show us some really good League of Legends. But, you know, with two subs, with three subs total, with two subs on one team, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to, you know, hard to uh, readjust, of course, because, you know, having two su subs uh, and whatnot. But uh, I believe in, you know, the mental fortitude of all the players involved. Uh, I want to thank Elemental Lux specifically 
for subbing in last minute for an emergency from Blue Bananas Bathy. So, what is uh, you know, what is your take on on this match? If if I have to, I always like to ask this to my co-commentators. What do you think is going to be the results of this week's match? You know, is it going to be two zero one side one one? What are you thinking? I think it's going to be a one one. I think. Maybe, unfortunately, with the Night Owls having two subs that they are a, a little bit of a disadvantage. I don't know if they've really had the chance to practice. Um, so maybe in the first game, they'll be taking a little bit of a surprise. But I think after playing a game, maybe they'll be a little bit more comfortable with each other. And, um, you know, kind of responding back to any Rams. And again, like you said, we have a last minute with Elemental Lux, which he is a great player. Uh, but team dynamics is a huge thing. Having the ability to practice and be familiarized with everyone's play style and communication, um, it's not on par of where they could potentially be if they had their actual um, teammate uh, present. So I'm, I'm anticipating maybe a 1-1. <laughs> One one, uh, yeah. Something to be said. Uh, Elmsen Lux is definitely playing off role. You know, he's not usually a top laner. I believe he played support all last season, and you're gonna have to stay in tune uh, to see what he's gonna be playing this season on my team. But you'll find out on Wednesday night. Uh, but I'd like to say that uh, the Night Owls have the brother synergy, Sweet Smell Suck and Misfortune Bot brothers, ready to take on the world together. And uh, you know, I'm excited for this pick ban phase because you know both. Both team, like both these teams are, you know, they, there's some unknowns on both teams here. Uh, so I'm really excited to see, you know, how the the pick ban phase is because since last season, uh, people have shuffled around roles. There's going to be new, there's new, uh, there's new blood, specifically, uh, Draven. Yes, good, uh, rising, up and comer, in the league. You know, ready to prove himself. So I mean, somehow I feel like a Draven fan might happen, but you know, you never know. <laughs> I mean, if you've got the champ in your team, you you gotta expect the ban, hopefully, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that was the problem with the Misfortune bot. You know, Misfortune was one of the highest pick banned champions of last season. Um, you know, just due to you know a few people maining him, a few as in like three out of the eight ADCs. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, we're getting right into pick bans. Uh, and Night Owls instantly uh, ban out Jin, which I believe is a very, very popular and or you know favorite pick of Urchin Merchant, which I believe he's adjusted himself from the support role to the ADC role, if that if I'm correct. So uh, you know that's one of his favorite ADCs. I, I I'm sure he has a lot more in the pocket, and he's played a lot of off meta picks, uh, off meta picks since you know all of last season. So. Akshan coming in, another ban, A Soul and Draven from the NA Rams. The, now, I, the A Soul is not an, an official, like, real ban. Um, ah, remember, they right. got the Since sub. NA Rams, yes. It's no one's going to play A Soul anyway. To quick it up. I just, I honestly forgot that they, you know, A Soul is a champion. And so, good ban. <laughs> I'm really reminding you that what Riot wants to forget, wants to dig, just beat down. No A Soul. Yeah. No roaming mid lane mages. So, so just as a reminder, as part of our policies and rules and procedures, um, if you have a last minute sub, um, you will take a ban hit so that ASOL 1 is more just to quicken up the timer and everything. Yeah, I mean, there's no ASOL, so until someone complains about it, we'll just be keep doing that. Uh, keep doing that for the time being. Uh, B1, Echo. So, you know, that's uh that's an interesting pick here. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So let, let's look at the let's look at the roster here for the Night Owls. So the Night Owls jungler is not here. Usually Phantom Gamer, but not today. I think today. today that will be Bench. Yeah, Bench. Maybe he's done Echo before yes. previously last season for his jungle. So this is you know this is probably a comforter pick for him. Echo very, uh, very mobile, very slippery, very good split push potential and pick potential. I'm excited to see it. Thresh and Trundle going over to NA Rams. Uh, a Trundle, a very popular pick for Rip Dusty. You know, we see it occasionally in pro play, sometimes even as support, but you know, uh, that's more of a very niche pick into a very specific circumstance. But, uh, you know, that being said, Rip Dusty, 
really really likes putting the trundle on you know he uh you know very one of one of his unique champions that uh i think you know signature champions rather uh and thresh coming out as well a warden so maybe we might see an Aphilios or you know a hyper carry from the red side so who do you think they're trying to finagle to allow them to kind of do their last pick and kind of think through who they want to last pick um so there was a miss pick here uh there's a morgana oh. here uh matches someone's gonna tell me about it it's lucian uh his computer froze it's a lucian the lucian morgana no problems no worries here so we see the jungler in the bot lane picked for both sides so now it's gonna be a, a fight for both mid and top they're gonna probably have to trade uh you know the counter picks both sides right so you know Red team's gonna have last pick, and so whoever they choose as last pick is gonna have the you know final counter pick. But uh, your red team's gonna have to pick first after the second ban phase. Fizz comes out as a ban into Night Owls. Uh, I'm not quite sure who's a Fizz player, but you know that was a highly banned uh, pick last season with Eminek being Eminek of the Sea. I was about to say, is Eminek playing? <laughs> I just had to look at the mm -hmm. roster for a second. It was like, yeah, he's he, he so somehow got himself in this game how you're gonna have to forgive us you know we're you know we spent so long in in ccs history now that we've been a, reborn from the ashes becoming wombo esports uh we're gonna have to get adjusted and so you're gonna have to bear with us uh teemo ban uh from the night owls into potentially uh elemental lux is the top laner of any rams this season uh i'm not quite sure if that was intentional but I'm excited. Maybe it was, you know, it's a pocket pick that Elemental Lux has. Mordekaiser ban going into Night Owls, taking it away from... Uh, who's the top laner for Night Owls? I believe that is Sweet Smell of Suck today. Um, the uh, sub from yeah, Yo Plays right. team. Yeah, Yo Yo Plays team. So, you know, these, uh, these people have done way more, way more research than I have. So I'm... Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust their instinct instincts and really uh really think yeah this is cerebral play I'm excited for it I have no idea <laughs> I haven't done my research on either of these teams because I'm not playing them yet so you know what it's okay it's the first game uh we don't really know anything but Malzahar plenty of full good pick very annoying with his uh just gonna click on you and stop you from moving just for a little bit. Yeah, I really like what we're seeing from the NA Rams uh, team. If, you know, if Trundle or Thresh can get, uh, you know, immobilizing CC, Malzahar can get in there. Because Malzahar is relatively short range, as we see from Mage. Not an artillery mage like Xerath or, Ooh. you know, Kogma or, you know, Ziggs. Garen coming out from the Night Owls. Um, being said, so so Night Owl, uh, NA Rams, they're trying to enable Malzahar, so you know he might have not so easy a you know a mid lane now that he's going to get a counter picked as we're going to see in the next 15 seconds, um, potential counter pick. But uh, that being said, you know it's it's trying to trying to get the team that is you know not so long range but not so short lanes to really come into Malzahar's threat range to really get any picks. So Thresh is good for picking Oriana to Malzahar. I have no idea how that goes. Don't play mid lane. I'll find out uh, sooner or later. But uh, I can, you know, look it up right now. Um, the good old online. But uh, the good old interwebs. The good old interwebs, you know, the favorite. Um, no idea how that goes. I believe it's a Oriana favored matchup, but the lane is kind of, uh, kind of even. So that being said, we now have the final of the draft. It's Orn in the top lane into Garen. Um, so depending on what Garen picks, uh, he might have, if he picks uh, a combat sum like Ignite, he's going to have kill pressure on Orn uh, with Garen passive and maybe D shield. He's not going to be able to get poked out by Orn, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see this team. So if we're you, in it. If you don't mind just spending a few minutes, just kind of giving your opinion based on just the champs that they select. How right, do you think yes. things are going to go? Early yeah. game, mid game, late game, while I kind yeah. of do some paperwork on my end. Right. So I, <laughs> I would also, yeah, I also ask you the question, but once you're ready, I always yep. like to ask, 
pre-pick ban predictions and post-pick ban predictions. So we're at the post part. Uh, NA Rams is looking uh, pretty, pretty well-rounded. Uh, a little lacking in AP damage. Alzhar is not really known for carrying games with his all of his AP. Really good for picking and really decent wave player safely. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. Uh, you know, armor stacking. Um, and Trundle not having too many great targets, uh, you know, to to really to really get on and engage like Garen, but I'm not sure how the Garen Trundle really works. Um, looking at this, it's you know it's there it's both teams have good amounts of Wombo, uh, but you know the pick potential that Thresh and Trundle and Malzor are gonna be looking for. I think is going to be greatly mitigated by like clutch Oriana or, you know, Echo being able to ult away before he's just dead. Echo's very slippery. So um, I think some of that bite is being, you know, staved off. But looking at the team, I think it's very well rounded. A classic front to back team for NA Rams. Nine Owls, I think, you know, really good team fight with Oriana ult. But I think, you know, it's going to be really on Oriana to make it happen. Like, really on Oriana to find these angles find these uh shock waves that are gonna disrupt the team really gonna allow echo and garen to get into prime targets so looking at this i think na rams have the advantage here because i think they have a more well-rounded team but that's that's what i'm gonna predict here i think this is slight advantage na rams okay so what do you think you know responding to so... you know, what i've said or I don't play top lane, so I don't know how the Garen and Orn um, matchup is going to be. I feel like Orn might have a little bit of a, I don't know. I just feel like he does more in terms of ganking, um, but I, that Echo is really scary. <laughs> right. Like yeah, I, feel, so. I feel like if he can really get onto that Malzahar early game, because like what is Malzahar going to do, like float? away like nowadays we have a lot of mobile champs and echo is pretty mobile as well so i feel like yeah. echo can really get oriana ahead of the game bot lane um that's kind of tough it really could go either way i feel like with the morgana and her q uh, might have a little bit more of potential and i think Lucian outputs a little bit more before Jinx, but I could be wrong. I don't know. So, um... Jinx can, uh, yeah, Jinx is, uh, the, you know, a very stereotypical hyper carry nowadays. Yeah. You know, one of the classics. And can hit from farther range than Lucian. Um, you know, barring ult, of course. Uh, Lucian ulting. But, um, I think, you know, the pick potential really goes to a Arams with Thresh Hook, Trundle Pillar, and yeah. Mazhar existing you know uh i think orn you know looking up the stats and you know really think about it, if if garen's packing ignite he's going to have pressure in top lane for the the first 15 minutes probably something around there orn doesn't really have the tools to actually super poke him out of lane because with garen packing d shield in his passive i think he's going to be able to regen it all up um and orn's just not gonna be able to scrap as hard as he needs to but orn's what it really packs is the scaling right um, NA Rams have excellent scaling with Jinx and, uh, I mean, Jinx, Thresh, and Malzahar. Pretty good scaling. Uh, you know, the early game might be, like, the weakest part of the NA Rams. It's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on yeah. Trundle and Rip Dusty to really make faint, make plays and find uh, good gank paths and good, uh, you know, good pathing to really find his way and maneuver because the early to mid game, I think, is very Night Owls heavy. Uh, you know, uh, Oriana, Malzahar, not so much, but, you know, Lucian, Morgana, very aggressive. Garen, very aggressive, especially if he packs Ignite. Uh, Echo, I don't know how well his clear stacks up with Trundle. I think Trundle has a healthier clear and a faster clear, but uh, Echo is going to scale really, really hard, and so eventually Trundle's not going to be able to, to duel him, but, you know, I think it's all going to be on Rip Dusty to really make a, a very intelligent place to be where he needs to be because these lanes are not looking so great for NA Rams. Um, that being said, if, if we're looking at Lucian Morgana, Morgana's a pretty good counter into Thresh, of course, because you know, Black Shield, 
And if even if he, you know, gets a hook, you can you can root him when he gets on you or you carry. Uh, so I think uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't. I'm not a bot laner. I'm not sure how the Jinx Lucian matchup goes. But you know, with my knowledge, I believe Lucian has pretty good bully potential. He Jinx does. needs really to ramp up. Yeah, Jinx really needs to ramp up. And uh, so that's that's I think the lanes, especially the early early game, goes to Night Owls here. But, you know, as the games go on, uh, especially with multiple subs on both teams, I think communication, especially in early parts of the season, is going to really be ironed out. And I think scaling teams are going to have an advantage, uh, a really big advantage here. Um, I think <clears throat> uh, because games are going to go longer, people are not going to be able to end games as quickly. We saw that with CCS with not so much, you know, games being done faster but like the metas changed like certain champions were pick ban in the beginning and then slowly phased out a la Mordekaiser or sorry not a la Malphite. Malphite was a prime pick early on. Mu was a prime pick early on with you know buffs and nerfs. Uh, we saw you know cert we you know the whole league kind of as a whole just kind of break away break away and move towards different picks more you know standard or you know generally team oriented picks or I guess, you know, stuff with, you know, much more stable floors than, you know, hoping for a really good Malphite ult. So I think the early to mid game goes to Night Owls, but, you know, if they don't just pound, pound NA Rams into the dust, I think it's going to be, it's going to be an uphill battle from after, let's say, 25 minutes. Absolutely. But didn't, here's a question. Uh, didn't Lucian get some kind of patch? A little bit of a fixy yes, wixy that I have not seen until so this patch. So they changed Lucian in this patch to try to move him out of the solo lanes because Lucian mid was dominant in pro play, very, very popular in pro play and, you know, high, high elo. In the mid lane specifically, you know, he's had his stints in top lane, had his stints in mid lane, and obviously ADC. But uh, they're, they're trying to take away some of his power in mid lane by adjusting his double shot. I think they made it do less damage, but if he gets enabled or, let's say, buffed by a teammate, then his double shot is empowered. Do I know the numbers off the top of my head? No. But uh, that is Riot's fix for trying to really keep him bot lane centric, a bot laner, instead of being a very aggressive and very aggressive and high priority min laner. Um, and so looking at these, looking at these, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. These runes. Uh, everything's looking pretty standard, except I'm not. So Sweet Smell Suck took ign uh, Teleport instead of Ignite. That's going to take away a lot of the kill pressure he has into Orn, right? Uh, I, I think I would have preferred to see a Garen soak up pressure top lane, keeping the jungler top by, you know, having pressure always on Orn, keeping him turret, pressuring the side lanes. Uh, but obviously TP is very, very important for these, you know, our, our coordinated games. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not against, not against it, but, uh, I was surprised to not see that. Every other, uh, summoner spell is looking pretty standard. Is there anything that's sticking out to you in terms of runes or summoner spells? Uh, wouldn't know about runes. <laughs> Have no knowledge about that. Um, no, not really. I am used to seeing the Malzahar with the teleport. The Oriana with the teleport, not so much used to that, but in uh, playing a lot of the games lately, it seems like mid laners are now um, taking teleport a little bit more, so uh, hope to see that used a lot. Um, the exhaust on the Morgana actually kind of makes sense for Jinx. Um, just to really stop her from getting to that hyper carry stage. So I think that's fine as well. I don't know if that answers. Yeah, I think, you know, with Morgana Bind and Morgana Bind and Lucian being able to, to poke as he can, poke and prod as he can, uh, I think is going to be enough. Um, and really keep, like, the late game exhaust is going to be very important, very impactful late game. Uh, these are all pretty standard rune setup, I think. Eat Mei's picking Orianna with. Uh, summonary makes sense, shielding, shielding allies and also, you know, attacking with auto attacks is very important that summonary is different from, um, 
Arcane Comet is that it procs off of auto attacks as well. Uh, and what we just saw there was, you know, a standard five point defense for both teams. It's going to be uh, opposite, you know, uh, a blue start from blue team and a red start from red team. Or sorry, blue start from both respective teams. Uh, jungle is going to pass to opposite side of the team. So we're going to see some kerfuffling on both sides of the map, roughly at two minutes and 30 seconds, three minutes. Right. And um, just to make sure you're at 154, 55, 56. Yeah, I'm exactly there. Yeah, I and mashed my plus button. Got your objectives open? Yep, I got my objectives open. I got my chat open. I got the scoreboard open. We just got to remember to uh, got to remember to take all of our stats at 10 minutes, but we'll get there when we get there. I don't think we have to do that uh, anymore, but... <laughs> do we not have to do that? Is that I don't think doing? so. But anyway, I, I don't think we actually investigated the point. But you know, That's just okay. in case, we'll get we'll get the screenshot. Yes. It don't but matter. But here we go. First game. I'm doing the squeaks. I don't know if it's getting no, picked don't, up. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Why? Don't don't do squeaks. What's this move that starts the squeaks? <laughs> it's part of this like the, the ceremony, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not even like a you know those thing the the party the party blower things. It's a but uh, that's we're not we're not cats here, so HXC. It's, we're not cats. it's a punchy we're not, we're not very... like ooh squeaky squeaky toy. Okay, well ooh squeaky squeaky toy, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going on. We're going on. Word, first blood hasn't been shed yet. Uh, apologies, my thing is a little bit lacking. But uh, I'll let you go ahead and take control. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so looking here, uh, Ben just sitting on a warm, not understanding that, uh, you know, they have that warded, uh, under making that realization now. Gonna go and disengage, get that scuttle crab. I think it's gonna be a traded scuttle crab here. Both junglers are mirroring each other's paths. They have the exact same amount of gold, so they're matching each other. There's some deep vision uh, by Rip Dusty putting into, or deep vision into the blue side. Uh, blue team's blue buff side. But uh, it's looking like, if we're looking at vision control here from NA Rams, it's definitely uh, definitely in their advantage right here. They have, in every single bush, they have that warded, so. Looking top lane, there was uh, Elemental Lux versus Sweet Smell Sucks. Sweet Smell Sucks looking for the freeze here. Uh, I don't believe he's going to be able to take it because the four, three minions is not enough. But uh, he's going to start a slow push in the other direction here. But uh, Garen passive is really going to be very impactful here. Oh, oh my Elemental gosh. Elemental goes in. Does not get the grass proc. It did not have it charged up. But Sweet Smell Suck is forced backwards. Uh, Rip Dusty already went back. You know, already spent his gold. Where Benj is going to look for more of a full clear. And it, you know, and looking at that. Uh, Rip Dusty is going to be pathing upwards, I believe. You know, maybe make a mid lane gank going topside. But uh, Bench looking for a gank here. Uh, the vision was cleared. Oh, so this is going to look like a kerfuffle here. Rip Dusty looking in for a lane gank. Uh, Rip Dusty is looking to channel. Very. Sorry, excuse me. Okay. Ben JJ, Ben JJ backs, seeing that he thinks that uh, the, the the bush was warded again, goes back. R Rip Dusty sitting in wait. They have no idea. They have not put down wards quite yet. Misfortune bot got pillared, but not enough. Airy ninety five hooks a minion. Nothing happens. So I think uh, I think that was very good awareness by blue teams right there. Draven yes good and Misfortune bot right there. Uh, to, to play it passively, you know, okay, they're, they're playing really up front in our faces for a long time. Something's going on. Oh, excuse me, one moment. Yeah, the red team's got... Look at that word, just hanging out, out there in the red jungle, and we just saw um, the trundle just kind of walk through their blue side's jungle, so... Looks like both junglers are doing a really good job of trying to get an invade on both other- or like take advantage of each other's jungling side. We're looking at a already six minute burst dragon going on to the red team. I think that means that Rep Dusty had an inkling that Echo was on the top side though so that he could go ahead 
and get onto that dragon. Objectives is a huge part of the game, so love to oh, see that. The first one goes up to Speed Small Suck, as during all that happened, uh, that's that's exactly the, the matchup differential that I was talking about earlier. Orn into Garen. Uh, Orn does not have the tools to really force Garen out of the lane, and then Garen could just stay on Orn and then, you know, put down the Justice, put down the Damasi Justice. Um, that's what we're saying. So first blood goes over. First blood of the first game of season one of Wombo Esports. Sweet Smile of Suck. Let it be remembered forever. Congratulations, Sweet Smile of Suck. I hope you feel great. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, looking at the difference between mid lane, uh, 10 CS, 9 CS, differential mid lane, but it's looking very non-interactive. He may has already backed once, where Idle Lucy has not yet. I think these are both, they're kind of doing like a handshake lane and they're just saying, all right, hey, we'll scale. And I, we, you know, we each believe in our respective mid lane capabilities and mid lane macro knowledge to say, hey, we'll just win the game later. And, uh, you know, we don't need to be fighting quite now because we'll be fighting a lot later. Uh, Sweet Small Suck is setting up a freeze top lane and Elemental Lux is choosing to roam downwards towards mid lane. We'll see what happens here. It's uh, warded up. Ime has that side of the map warded. Sweet Smell Suck is uh, really keeping the keeping the freeze going, shrimming off a little bit of the wave. Uh, maybe have trimmed it a little too much, but really forcing Elmita Lux uh, out of some XP and gold. Very important. Uh, if he kept the freeze, which I think is now broken, uh, Rip Dusty would have had to come up and break it for him, but it's looking like Sweet Small Suck is gonna start a slow push the opposite direction. Talking about Rip Dusty, he's making a, uh, he's making a, you know, nice little jaunt in the enemy jungle. It looks like he didn't pass uh, over that blue ward, so they yeah. don't know. So they don't know. I think this is a really good intelligent passing from Rip Dusty, but I would like to say Ben JJ has been clearing camps, getting there to his side of the jungle first, clearing it so that even though with all these invades Rip Dusty has been doing, he uh, hasn't been getting any camps for it, just wasting a lot of time, where Ben JJ is, you know, keeping up, trying to go for some ganks, um, really setting that up. Rip Dusty on Rift Herald, it's looking like that's going to be the first one. They have no no vision of it. Uh, Rip Dusty is actually keeping putting a lot of wards placed into the enemy jungle. So I think other teams are going to have to be really cognizant of that as, you know, the season moves on. Draven, yes, good, is going in. He's black shielded, <gasps> oh. just doesn't take it. I believe that there was a Chompers going down. And, uh, yeah. Um, so this game is looking like it's going pretty slowly. At what point of the game do you think? Oh, Rip Dust, uh, Elm Deluxe is coming. Maybe now. The Forge God. To your and question. it's just, they're going to take a Chomp and... Nothing's gonna happen. So Rip Dusty does have, uh, does have the Eye of the Rift Herald. He's gonna choose it. Instead of putting it down, he's gonna back. And so that would have guaranteed him an Elemental Lux 160 gold a piece, because it gets at least two plates each time. But uh, yes, so HXE. What do you think, um, what do you think um, Ben, JJ, or, you know, the junglers could do on each side, because all these ganks have been pretty, pretty ineffective is there anything you'd think that you know they could be doing differently yeah to... i think both teams have been i mean look at this like both teams have really good instincts going on in this game they they ever every attempt a game a gank has been attempted each one has already been behaving in a way where like they, oh i kind of feel like something is going on so really cool to see how great um everyone's been responding and kind of getting that instinct that something is not quite right um i kind of feel like with how um maybe not really aggressive but both junglers have been going into each other's jungle i feel like at some point somebody is going to get caught out and i think that's where we might see a little slippage coming through yeah. Rip Dusty's took the boss going over. It's looking like it's gonna be dive not as big of a wave as you'd want it. Uh I don't not sure that this is what you want to do here. Draven Yes Goods firing out. Airy 95 does get the hook onto Draven Yes Good. Flashes away. And not much happens. I believe that could this could just be, you know, a drop of the Rift Herald right here. Yeah, and uh dropped it. Rift Herald gets dropped. Oriana is coming down. Ben JJ is not seen. Ben JJ is gonna go in. 
doesn't get the stun, but there's a TP coming out from Malzahar while Orion is not there yet. Ben JJ gets the ult, gets away. And Eat May just slates the fight. Ben JJ fighting for his life. Archer Merchant is looking to, to run away with a flash by Eat May. Very smart. It's just that Malzahar had the TP advantage, got there first, and made, you know, impacted before Orianna could rotate down. Uh, and it's looking like, you know, very clean play by the NA Rams. Very well done. Yeah, that looks really risky for a second. I really thought uh, the Night Owls would come out of that. Oh! Oh, Shockwave comes out, but it's just not enough. Uh, Benji J went for a hero steal, got in there late, does not have ult, does not have flash, eat over, didn't have it. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the plan there was, but here we are. You know, trying to be the hero that his team needed, maybe steal back a Drake, because, you know, roughly 10 minutes, we could potentially be on soul point. You know, 22 minutes, very early on. This is dominant dragon control by, uh, by the NA Rams, so... Now, just... You know, what you... Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, just as a reminder, NA Rams only has one sub, which is the Elemental Lux Orn at the top, whereas the Night Owls has two subs, their jungler and their top, which is pretty, pretty big difference, especially... Pretty with... significant, because their jungler was Phantom, Phantom Gamer. Gamer HD, which was, you know, one of the, one of the best junglers from last season. Couldn't make it tonight. So, you know, obviously a core to the team. Um, also, another core to the team is is very much uh, Achievements 21. You know, the every man's, the every every position kind of man, but, you know, top laner, extraordinaire. You know, both of these, uh, both of these players. Sorry, both of these players, you know, very, very pivotal for both of their team comps. Uh, not being seen here today so maybe that'll cost uh, the nine owls but you know by no means are they out of the game right. yet you know, i mean only 600 gold difference right now i mean look at that but, we've uh, got the garen who has a little bit of a cs advantage and has a kill on top so i think um individually they are doing great and job. three plays but ben jj is gonna go in here get the invade onto rip dusty but you know this is looking pretty pretty unsafe there mouse gets the ult and just calls it down so this is exactly what I'm talking about here for, you know, setting up for I Love Lucy, the, the Malzar, right? Like, you know, Malzar, all he's do is click R and then guarantees a very good pick. Ben JJ went in with not that much vision. And, uh, you know, he got, he got the, he got the thing, he got the red buff, but, you know, couldn't make a kill happen. Sweet smell suck. Uh, looking to get, you know, pinched here. Yeah, and I think you know, for being a sub, I think Bench is... Oh! Alex DC. So, uh, pause here. No problem. So, it's just gonna be a pause. Uh, sometimes we're gonna have technical difficulties like this, you know. We're all just... It's a beer league. You know, we can't all have perfect internet like me. Unfortunate. <laughs> that being said, so HXC, um... What are you looking... Uh, I, I'm fearing for the Night Owls here because, you know, as I said, their 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 team is on a time limit because I think the scaling very much goes into NA Ram. Um, very much goes into NA, NA Ram's, uh, you know, their advantage because they they scale well. They have they're gonna get the ornaments at Elements and Lux in just a few levels for Orn. Gonna be giving that to Ursha Merchant. Making a reasonable lead, you know, he's got one kill, two assists on his laner and about six CS. Um, not too much CS differential, but, you know, he's gotten plates from the Rift Herald. He's gotten, you know, a kill and two assists. Very important. So, you know, getting the Jinx off the ground is what we said was probably going to be the, the worst thing to happen. But she's getting for, there. Uh, <laughs> she's getting there, exactly. Oh, uh, did your game freeze? Yes, my game froze. Love that. I'm stuck. Um... I'm stuck. What's happening? Can someone help me? I am also stuck. Mayday, mayday, we're going down. What's happening? Oh no, okay. someone tell me. Uh, oh, I just clicked back? around a little bit and got yeah, caught up. Yeah, we're back. What's your uh, timestamp? Oh, 1451, 52, 53, 54, Hit, hit, plus a few times. Ah, uh, I am. Because I'm at 58, 59, fit, fit, you know. 
One, two, yep, I'm good three. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, is this looking like it might be a slow death? Obviously, I don't want to say anything. There's there's a lot of game in this game once we play and there's barely <laughs> any gold advantage. Uh, but, you know, as, as the game goes on, it's going to get scarier and scarier for Nine Owls if they don't get these important picks. Eat May? It's looking like she's caught outside. The Shockwave comes out. I Love Lucy has his Force to Flash. You know, Ben JJ on there gets the kill. Rip Dusty is on the flank. Ben JJ still has Corner Shift. Does not get to use it. The Chomp comes down. This is a great. Rip Dusty gets the Chomp. Dies. Eat May is going to be the next one to be taken down. And that's double kill. So. For Rip Dusty. I think. I mean, that was good to try and get the pick out of that Melzahar. But I mean, I think we just saw Trundle and Orn top lane. A Gary, in fact during that fight so i'm not sure if that exactly was the best call and i think right now where the night owl struggles the most is again they have two subs i'm not sure if the communication is quite on par at this moment right um i think that it was uh you know it was ben jj really trying to get back into this game he gets the kill but you know he was trying to trying to hold chrono shift chrono break sorry my bad Chrono break for as, as far as possible, um, you know, but, you know, Trundle, you know, at that point, he was 3-0-1. He's going to chomp you, and he did. He very much did that. Uh, uh, it's important. It's important to, you know, be good and oh. just run away with what you can. But, you know, Ben JJ wanted a little bit more. Oh. Pickbook coming out. Okay, it's Echo. I think he's going to immediately Chrono break. Is that no. Oopsie button? Oh, he went back in. He, he went back in, gets the stun, flashes oh. away, but Urchin Merchant goes out. I think another overestimate by, you know, Ben JJ in his damage, he only has Hextech Alternate. He does not have, uh, you know, Hextech Proto Belt uh, or the Rocket Belt quite yet. Eat May uh, does not get hit. That's uh, TP from Orn. Orn's coming down. Uh, and that's just going to be a kill. Another pick for, uh, another pick for Rip Dusty. Uh, Urchin Merchant fires ult, does not hit, and um, so the third Drake is going to go down the ocean at 17 minutes, 25 seconds. Uh, it resets a little bit, but they also drop Drift Tail to threaten mid lane, and that's what they're going to do. Um, uh, that being said, Sweet Smell Suck, trying to, trying to start the side laning for this game right now, because I think, you know, with what well, since we last talked about the gold, uh, it's now swung to a 3.2, 3.3-ish K gold lead. Uh, that's very, very pivotal. Uh, there's a, there's a two big shutdowns to take, but you have to kill a Trundle and a Jinx behind a Malzahar and a Thresh. So this is, I think, very good, very good position the NA Rams find themselves in. Uh, they have a Fed Jinx. She's going to be cooking. Uh, you know, barely up CS, but, you know, up in every other statistic, you know, plates, kills, assists, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's looking good for Urchin Merchant here. Um, what do you think, uh, we should see from the, uh, the oh. Night Owls to, to, what adjustments do you think that they should be making right now to, uh, oh, that being said, that's going to be another Eat May death. I th just think that she can that she yeah. can absolutely farm in the mid lane. How dare she? Um, that being said, what what do you think the adjustments have to be made for uh, for Night Owls to to really find their way back into this game here? I mean, if you just look at um, any Rams, their vision is like just all over the place. I think the team needs to work a little bit more on clearing out their jungle, stop from getting that kind of single pickage like i just feel like um the night owls are just not on the same page with each other and they just keep kind of playing it a little bit uh more individually where they need to be communicating a little bit more maybe traveling a little bit more to be a little to be more careful um especially with how behind they are i don't really think anybody can kind of been be on their own at this moment yeah if that makes sense so what i'm really seeing and i agree with everything you're just saying but i think specifically what we're seeing is is the the vision control it's absolutely been in a rams since the beginning uh they've had they've all been buying paints they've been plunking them down every single getting deep wards yeah, in I mean, like, show if you just where the movement of the jungler look at it right now <laughs> yeah if you look at the division scores every person is up except for the top laner on uh the na rams you know every single person up by a non 
non, uh, you know, barring, I guess, mid, mid bot and top, but, uh, you know, the gap between the two supports is very significant. Um, Rove Dusty has probably spent a few hundred uh, gold on pink wars just this game, the control wars. Um, I think it's paying dividends for him. He's, uh, you know, yeah, I, Sweet Smell Suck goes in on Elemental Lux. You know, the call of the Forge God comes in, gets the knock up. Sweet Smell Suck does flash away, and yeah, he gets up. Kind of clean. You know, Garen, hard to kill, hard to pick, even though you get knock ups. Uh, you know, he's he's a, he's a wily one. Rip Dusty is looking to come in, but you know, Sweet Smell Suck backs away wisely. Gotta give up to it. Look at all this vision. <laughs> yeah, and, it's very lit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is this is looking like a vision difference right here. Uh, you know, I, I think most teams just need to be buying more, uh, buying more uh, pink warts and, and really trying to clear more, or just try to be aggressive with it. I mean, not, like not... even if they're sharing the same vision, you still need that vision to be able to move forward. Doesn't matter if they see you, if you also see them. I mean, not only that, we've got four top. They're, they're starting to trickle their way onto the base versus two of, four of the other members of, um, sorry, I'm getting used to their names, mm -hmm. of the Night Owls are still working on the first tier of their respective lanes. Like, why aren't they responding? Yeah, they, they thought that you know, maybe Sweet Smell Suck could, could hold by himself, you know, Garen's. But a Garen against four can't be done. Right, and that's why uh, I'm there saying was... we're like the communication thing and, and yeah. to not their fault or anything. But again, they're not with their full team. And I think there's a little bit just not being able to practice and whatnot that it's... <sighs> it's really showing in these games right here. Yeah. Um... I love Lucy, you know, taking a pretty commanding, you know, CS lead and experience league which is very important you know two levels up on his laner it's it's looking that uh <clears throat> that eat mate was trying to make a tp play but it got canceled by malzalt earlier um blue team's not trying to fight for vision and red team doesn't actually have vision down yet and mazhar has tp very important but you know if it's five on five it's a 4K, 4.5, 4.4K gold lead. Oh, to my the word. NA Rams. I'm so sorry. I just noticed that <laughs> red team has three jungles or three dragons. So this will be for the four. Yeah, this, this I is have sold. no this idea when, when that happened, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is this is absolutely sold. The third Drake was taken. So this this is looking like it, it's very close to the, you know, the CCS record of fastest dragon soul. I think it was like 2218. This is going to be very, very close. This is a very, very good showing. They're going to pull it out. Very smart. Uh, it resets. They're not, they don't actually have the vision that they want to take. Uh, they seem to be scared of... Uh, they seem to be play playing it slow. Not scared, but they're, they're playing it slow. They don't have sight on, on all of the team. And, uh, you know, Smooth Souls likes there. So, they, you know, it comes out... Red team slays oh. the dragon. It was very close. The smites didn't. Neither the junglers took it. Uh, you know, Urchin Merchant secured it for his team. But uh, there it is. Ocean Soul going down. I think to Oriana the first... landed a full five man all. But I don't think uh, she had enough damage to quite exactly at least take one of them down. Yeah, you know, uh, Oriana's missing the pen that she needs right now from Void Staff. And, you know, she's been down, so she's down levels, down, you know, the, the base level stats. Uh, and, you know, down in gold. So it's, it, it was looking like maybe just to disrupt the junglers, so that, or, you know, just disrupt uh, Rip Dusty. Uh, to disrupt Rip Dusty from taking, getting the smite, so BenJJ can find his way in and smite, hold out. Uh, it was very close. It was actually a smite fight that I think both junglers, one of the junglers, smote early, and it went, came down to an auto attack by Urchin Merchant to take. Um, this game is looking not great for the nine owls here. <laughs> a rough. It's, it's a, a very, very, very rough. And I think if the the NA Rams just play it super standard, they play it, you know, they just play slow, play methodical. They have they they win any siege fest because of the ocean soul. And with, with, you know, the ability to do that, they can stay in pressure lanes forever. They don't need to back. 
No amount of poke from Eat May or Misfortune Bot is actually going to change that. Uh, and so, you know, they still have to be clearing clearing supers out of top lane. And they can just play it slow and steady. And whenever they wanted to, they can decide to move to Baron. And that's what we're going to be seeing right now. So, what do you think the Night Owls needs to do right now? Because it just seems like every single person is just so behind and... All the other lanes are being pushed in. Um, and Aram's definitely has control of the entire map. Like, what do you do in this situation? Uh, I think at this point, it's it's even if you get a pick, uh, you, you can, at this point, I think the team and like the way the comps are working out, that you cannot, I don't think you can win even a 4v5 at this point. I think this is gonna be just a slow death. Uh, the game, I don't want to say the game's over, because obviously we would like to see some play, but it's hard, uh, it's hard to see any other expectation where e is going to get a pop down, call the Forge God comes in, e does get the flash over, gets the shockwave onto two, not enough, flash forward by Rip Dusty, gets the kill, uh, Rip Dusty does subjugate Misfortune Bot, and it's looking like they're all going to be back to full resources, and they're just going to get the... They're, they're looking to reset or just pressure all three lanes. It doesn't matter what they do. I think they have enough gold spent that they match whatever the Night Owls have. So, I don't, and so, I don't know. Do you think ahead. there'd be enough time for uh, maybe to let like the Orianna do some farming, let her kind of take a lot of the CS that's coming in onto their base and maybe a good combo between the Ori all the Echo going in for that stun and Morgana all do you think maybe they I just, could use I that don't, to turn it around or is this just they don't I they think, can't put in out enough damage yeah I think at the very most uh they it would have to be a burst right uh it would have to be a pick so it has to be like misfortune bot getting something into a shockwave into uh the coaling from Lucian to really get one or two right and that point then you have to play it really slow and then win the with the man advantage of the five v3 uh but that being said you know with any amount of time passing in between fights it's really going to be benefited special to the na rams with their ocean soul uh there's not that much grievous wounds a sweet smell suck has doubled up on grievous wounds here uh and it's looking like him and eat may are the only ones to have it on their team so there's not that much grievous wounds going on so they're not even mitigating all this health uh that they're regenning all this mana that they're regenning uh so it's it's not looking good itemization wise uh i don't think e -Mate has the the pop to really pop anyone even if it's jinx right uh jinx doesn't have flash anymore still has heal and thresh shield and whatever else people want to peel for them so um it's just not looking good here it's looking like uh just kind of a, a slow, you know, like a game that was looking pretty good until it wasn't, <laughs> you know, slowly, okay. a very, very wait, slow wait, game. Wait, how about this? How about that? What about this? Next dragon is um, the Hua one, right? Correct. Yes, it is Elder Dragon. Hua, yes, yes, indeed. yes. So what if they somehow stole Elder Dragon? Could that potentially get them back into the game? I mean, that's like, isn't that part of the purpose of why they threw it, threw that dragon into the game? I think I may have lost it. Yeah. So, oh. um, oh. so, well, the the Elder Dragon, uh, it really adds a objective to really end games quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, the games are quicker than they used to be uh, from seasons in the past. Uh, I believe Elder Dragon's one of those. It's like a big, it's a it's a objective that all teams fight over and so forcing a team fight and let's say even they don't fight over it just helps you win team fights to win the games right yeah um it's you know it's exactly oh my god you know, i'm it, sorry jinx looks very scary <laughs> jinx is absolutely terrifying and elder drake's up in two seconds uh i think you know ben jj is you know one threatening uh urch or merch right now but element of lux is on the back you know trying to pop the inhibitor does have tp no one's going to answer. Sweet Smell Suck is running over to answer. Uh, it's looking like they're just trying to play time and play it very conservatively from what I'm seeing. I'm surprised we're not seeing any any rundowns, any... Uh, we, we see Lock of the Iron Solari for... You know, on... 
on Thresh. What I, I think I would have liked to see is maybe like Turbo Chem Take, you know, because the, the, the team is, is really lacking any sort of engage. Uh, they're really good at disengaging other than Orn. Orn's going to be like all of it. Ime is going to walk in to try to face check. Oh, Malzor gets oh! absolutely deleted by exactly what we were saying before. It's like, it's got to be a pick. But, you know, at this point, the wallet sizes are just too different. The gold differences, and they're just going to take the team fight, and they're going to go for the end. Oh. Sweet smells suck. You know, the guy, uh, Garen, he's always trying to be where his team, you know, to cover positions where his team couldn't be. Uh, and unfortunately, that means he needed to go back to base, but giving Elemental Lux the ability to get back and help his team. That was looking uh, so hopeful for a second. <laughs> Yeah, so that's exactly what we're talking about. Like, all of them need to dump on one target, and they would get one, but they, they just have to disengage immediately. And that's really hard to do, to disengage already from a Warren comp and Thresh. Right? It's, you know, it's pretty, pretty hard to do that. With Baron up in 45 seconds, uh, it's looking like they take Baron and walk it in here. And NRM currently has the Elden Dragon, so that's what percentage over they immediately die or under. Yes, it's I believe it's 25 or 20 percent off. They just immediately get popped, and they also get burn. They also get burn damage. Uh, damaging enemies cause them to burn 120 true damage. It's a 220 true damage burn and executes them under 20 percent max health. Jesus. Yeah, so at this point, it's just, you know, the the gap in the wall is too big. And with the ornaments, they're getting more and more scaling. Uh, Element Deluxe is going to get a two-man knockup. Misfortune Bot's going to get popped. Sweet Smell Sucks looking very close. Very oh good to And <laughs> Jinx is going off. No! This might be a pentakill. This might be the first game, first pentakill. And he's looking for it. Oh, uh, <gasps> this is really close. If he gets a... He get, oh, stolen! Stolen! <laughs> the first pentamill possibly to come Report. here. Report. Report Absolutely. him. I, I can't believe this. And this is going to be, it's going to be a, you know, uh, very commanding first game from the NA rounds. Oh, beautiful, man. beautiful to see. Absolutely scammed out of the first. So we only had one Penta last season when we were still CCS. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, to the, the man himself, Blue Bananas Bathy. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it here today. Uh, Urchin Merchant was trying to make his debut as an ADC main and get it. And he was stolen, scammed away. Why by, even bother uh, playing the next game, right? Why would you even <laughs> play the game? At this point, you should just uh, kick the captain out of the team. Make yourself uh, make the captain. your own team. Yeah, make declare throw a cue, declare. Uh, can you go into the grass, please, and declare yourself? You know, emperor, Lord Emperor of the uh, the NA Rams. Yeah, exactly. but if you could open up the graphs tab, we can look at you know the visual. Sure thing, for you anything. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so. Looking at Eat May actually was, you know, a lot of AoE damage, uh, really, you know, very, you know, very solid amount of damage. It's just that uh, I think with what you were saying with the miscommunications, it's really hard for the Nine Owls to really make those decisive, uh, decisive picks that they need to get back into the game or to, to force it over towards them. Because, you know, maybe they're like, OK, we don't have vision on them. We don't have the decisive picks. And when, when they decided to do engage Ben JJ multiple times in the early game when he tried to engage uh he uh you know he maybe gets some good damage but then they gets immediately popped by two people coming out of the uh the fog of war <clears throat> so that's uh that's what we saw here um I mean urchin merchant f bl flying away with the game not unsurprising jinx hyper carry getting uh getting peeled by Thresh, you know, very standard play. Uh, you know, it's the game went to, you know, went over 25 minutes. And so that means it was very firmly in the NA Rams pocket. Uh, it was just looking that the nine hours couldn't really get anything started across the map. It was, you know, both teams were kind of just like scared to, you know, as the game was progressing, both of the teams were scared to, uh, to really make some plays until, you know, Rip Dusty was really, 
uh, I'm starting, starting some kerfuffles. Uh, really, I think what really made the difference was what really made the difference was that vision control. It's you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, with the vision control, uh, there was a few oversteps by blue team that ended up with and you know starting the avalanche, and uh, I believe that was that's what spelled death to uh, to the night owls for this game. I would like to go back into the the other the other stats page and really sure. look at the 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 ward score the vision score uh so control wards bot by rip dusty is 12 control wards bot uh you know ben jj was coming 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 close with eight but uh looking at the vision score you know uh it, it's it's just higher across the board 66 46 you know versus you know 30 and 27 right like that is huge amounts of difference and that's and that's uh that's what you got to do to i think you know if the nine hours are looking back into this game that's the the one uh, n not the easiest but the simplest way to really look at what they've done and improve upon it because this is just like vision gap it's absolutely dark in certain parts of the map and absolutely bright for the other side so i believe that's what really made the difference in the mid game to really start the avalanche mm. uh I i'm wondering what your thoughts are on like what really happened or what you think happened you know, um, in this game. I think absolutely the vision score was great. I think both junglers did a really good job of trying to invade each other's jungle. Um, as you had mentioned earlier, each or at least Benj, I think had a good response of getting an inkling of where um, the trundle was going to be at. I think both teams in the beginning had a really good response and instincts and thinking of when a gank was going to come up i think the core thing that is a problem was the communication skills i think we saw the any rams be a little bit um bundled up and kind of responding a little bit better than the other team and i think that's the thing i don't need to repeat but i think that's the thing that's has stick stuck out to me the most um don't mean to shift too much but i just want to double check with you do you need a couple minutes of break or are you good to go ahead to the second game? Uh I I think it'd be good to start Okay. To start maybe like uh let's you know to start the trend of 10 minutes between each game to give teams especially the teams to to really talk about what they need to fix. At least 10 minutes, you know, pro play you get like an hour or whatever. You get a lot more. But uh it's Okay. Then uh, I, I will... think I think a good start is okay. So the game finished at nine fifty, so we can start at ten o'clock. Um, I know both teams were looking to immediately jump into it. Um... Oh, okay. Never mind. Wait, if both teams want to do it, oh, screw me. My opinion doesn't matter. Let's start. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. All right. Run. I'm gonna go ahead then and shift it over to the draft here. Let them know casters are ready. Go ahead and get My bad, Miss Fortune Bot. I didn't know you you wanted to end right now. Golly gee. I didn't know. Uh, yes, I know I have five minutes left to lock in. Clash, lady. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, so just kind of um, continuing that conversation and just kind of transitioning in um, into the second game. What do you think now that we've had our first official game for this tournament. Um, and again, like I said, the Night Owls has two subs. What do you think that they will want to be doing now? Maybe uh, obviously I think... like Trundle Ban. <laughs> so I, I would think maybe uh, Trundle Ban and then uh, it, it's really hard to ban out Urchin Merchant. It's 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 definitely very difficult to do that because he's probably got a, he's probably got a few unconventional picks uh, a la Ziggs or maybe a la Heimerdinger. Oh my god, draft starting. So I'd think maybe Jinx and Jin ban call it a day. And really focus on getting your mid lane and your jungle to, to pressure bot lane, to pressure the, the NA Rams bot lane to really push them in. So uh, Urchin Merchant doesn't really have the opportunity to do it. And so it's with two champions being down in bot lane, that's twice as many amount of uh, gold and experience you can uh, to take and then deny from the enemy team, right? Um, so I think it's very important to, to pressure bot, but uh, 
Not quite sure what's going to go on. Trundle ban, Akshan ban, uh, Swain ban going from the NA Rams to the Night Owls. I think it's a very common pick from Eat May, one of her signature champions. Uh, Echo ban from the Night Owls into the NA Rams. Uh, okay, so I guess the Night Owls are not planning to go Echo again. So banning it away, or I guess it was a steal. So maybe one of the people on the NA Rams team gets, you know, likes likes Echo, and maybe they just chose to steal. So maybe that's what shaped their draft, and they're looking for a whole new draft strategy this time. Uh, Draven taken out, obviously. Draven, yes, good. Probably not going to get Draven for a long, <laughs> long time. Din immediately picked up by the NA Rams, uh, a favorite, a very, very favorite of Urchin Merchant. Tristana? That's, uh, I'm not quite sure how the Tristana Jin matchup goes. Uh, it really depends, I think, on the supports. I'm not sure how much how much they actually interact with each other, other than if, you know, if Tristana gets the jump in, blows, you know, blows up the explosive charge and jumps out, pretty good. And, uh, you know, as Guabafet99 says in chat right now, it could be Trist mid. Uh, not so common, but very possible, like Hail of Blades, Trist mid, really trying to keep pressure by constantly pushing waves, um, putting a lot of damage on turrets, and roaming potential. Very, very possible. Leona picked up by the Unisles for R2. Uh, so, you know, they're really trying to shut down, get onto Jin and shut him down. But if maybe Thresh comes in uh, or, you know, anything with really good Puel, well, that's what we might see here. So it looks like we potentially have our bot lanes already figured out. Could be a Lux mid, though. Oh no, that's a Yon mid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yon mid. Uh, I believe I don't have... I'm watching over the stream, so I see it after you guys. Uh, you don't have so the link? Have... Nope, no one gave me the link. Is it not in the caster's chat? It oh, hey, it is. is. Hey, it didn't light up for me. Don't worry about it. Forget about it. Hey, forget about it. <gasps> Heimerdinger. Big fan. Now, I don't think we've seen a Heimerdinger at all last season. If not, maybe it was the the last week's match of New Best Friends versus the Rare River Ducks. I don't remember if Heimerdinger was played in that match because it was Yordles versus uh. not Yordles, I forget. <laughs> Uh, I don't believe it was picked there, but I can't remember off the top of I my head. I don't remember either. I don't believe. So this might be the first ever Heimerdinger we've seen in play. So what Heimerdinger brings to the table is is constant push power and setup, right? Like, he's hard to gank because, you know, if he has all three of his turrets set up, uh, you know, gank comes in, they're going to take a lot of damage from the turrets, and then Heimerdinger disengages for free, right? But, you know, like, obviously he's got... The, the skill shot, the rocket launcher, skill shot, uh, pretty good damage. Um, we don't have the option of seeing Pusher Dinger anymore with the removal of Banner of Command and ZZ Rock Portal. I really like that build. You just push forever, but Hole Breaker's in the game, but that doesn't really help Heimerdinger's base stats. Uh, uh, Kindred being banned in, as well as Viego. And the second round bands, Orn and J4. So J4 and Trundle being uh, premier picks of Rip Dusty. Uh, so it makes sense. Very possible. So we might see an Olaf for Sichuani from Rip Dusty right here. Uh, Night Owls. Not so easily uh, discernible. Not quite. Not sure what they're going to be going with. Volley Bear. Wasn't expecting that. Wouldn't have guessed that in my life. So uh, yeah. they. Uh, I was right. I didn't know. I was right. Um, so Volleyball is going to act as engage here, or at least, you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good team fight, you know, you know, good dive potential. Oh, Lilia. I think we've only seen Lilia one time before. I believe it was Sea Slugs versus, uh, I couldn't remember which team Sea Slugs brought it out with, but it was Lilia Jungle. I believe when, uh, Lilia was still, uh, very strong in pole play. But these, there's been series of nerfs and then a set of buffs. Since then, uh, we've seen Leah in the top lane occasionally as a anti-tank pick. Uh, but I'm not quite sure that's what we're seeing right here. Very possible. Uh, Shen going to the top lane. Uh, so it is Lilia jungle. 
uh, Nine Owls get the final counter pick. I believe it's going to be their... T- 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 I have no idea. Top laner? Jungler. No idea. Um, We're going to find out here. I f- oh, Hacker. okay. I was just so about it's going to be say, Volley yeah. top. Okay, so looking at these matchups, I can tell you about the Shen Volley Bear matchup. Yes. It's actually very hard for Shen to interact with Volley Bear. Um, but uh, okay, so before I get into that, now looking at uh, this whole comp, what do you think is your post pick ban prediction for game two? I really like the Night Owls pick. Um, I think they have a really, like, three really good engaged um, champions, and Tristan and Heimerdinger can just kind of willy on in the back. That being said, you just really want to make sure that they protect them from Yon, because uh, with his knock-up and the alt thing, I think that can really be a problem. Um, but I, I really like the Night Owls um, kind of locked down and pick really, really aggressive engage with that either the Luna out. Alt, the Hakarim, all like I, I, I'm for the Night Owls team comp. So uh, I agree. Um, looking at the lanes here, uh, Lux Jin is uh, a lot more diveable, a lot more exploitable, especially with Leona coming in. Um, Tristana is going to be very good in scaling. Is going to get that range bonus that's uh, going to allow her to every team fight is going to be allow her to play at her range at her you know whatever she wants better and better and better so i really like seeing that um and i do like the amount of hard engage that the night house has i think they have they had an idea of like a simple picks dumping on that one person and calling it a day it didn't work out for them this time so this is going to be a lot more clear of like okay this team fight volibear can go in heck can go in Leon can go in, Heimerdinger and Tristan can sit back and react, play reactively while the rest of their team can play proactively. Draven. Now looking on the other side, NA Rams, it's definitely squishier than last time, right? Uh, Shen not being the hyper tank Orin is, um, what Shen gives is a lot better laning. He's basically, you know, bruiser in laning. Uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's definitely a bruiser. But he gives global map pressure, so whenever Yon is going to go in or Lilia is in need of trouble, Shen can definitely go and, you know, enable those two carries to not die. Get with, excuse me, get where they need to go. So I really like seeing that. Uh, but it's a lot of it's going to be on Yon and Lilia to, Yon and Lilia to 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 really find the team fight openers here uh you know yon very good laning i'm not sure how the yon heimerdinger matchup goes but uh going from top lane or sorry let's get back to the point i think uh just looking at this paper uh this draft i really like nine owls as well Mm -hmm. but uh you know mental has always has a game so i'm gonna give i'm gonna give my prediction to to night owls yeah i think Um, with that any rams if they go really hard in the early game maybe that can delay the night owls a bit i think if you really give the night owls enough time i know the last game was a little bit harder to do that but i really feel like if you if if it was this game where the night owls had their team come i think they really would have a chance um of coming back if you give it enough time so i think the early game will be really important for the na rams otherwise if the night owls have that good early game i feel like that will really kind of set the tone and the pace for the rest of the game um absolutely because like what and the team... know there's in volume higher heck room we're just going to keep getting tankier and you can't really yeah. kill them right and you know Jin's not the greatest at dealing with hyper tanks uh or tanky people in general uh so so looking at this uh the na rams had to play a lot more carefully because their team is way more squishy yep you know they don't they don't have the inherent defenses malzar gives thresh with the peel and stats and orn obviously being orn uh it's you know it's it's very dangerous they, they play it a lot more carefully but you know execution is on them uh you know team fights you know if anything nine Owls is losing losing a little bit of damage uh but 
maybe that's it's going to be mitigated by all the setup and engage I know is going to have. They're just going to be able to hit their stuff if you know the engage goes off. If one gauge goes off well, the rest can go off pretty much without a hitch, right? Right. Yeah, I think the the yone is going to be a key. Like I hate to put it that way, but I feel like yones is going to be very important in in how things turn out for the NA ramps. Because um, if he can get onto that Tristan and Heimerdinger, the sooner the better. Uh, what what's the Night Owls gonna do? Right, exactly. Um, so you're you know as a, as a bot laner yourself, you know one of the two positions. I don't know at this point. <laughs> um, I don't know either. Look, You're fantastic. Jin Lux, Tristan, and Leona. <laughs> what do you think about that lane here? Um, I think Jin and Lux need to be aggressive in the early game um and if they can snab a couple of kills in the early game i think that will put them in a really good position otherwise if you let if you don't really get that kind of lead um leona's just gonna get tanking and she's not gonna care uh she's a really good engage in tristana with her bombs and everything stacking on it i think they can just get blown up pretty quickly. So I think in the bot lane, Jin and Lux need to be a little bit aggressive. Um, but that being said, you'll need to be careful with that Hecarim because he moves fast. So... <laughs> right, and, you know, we, we saw the, the devilry that was the turbo chem tank meta, which, which was Hecarim, Udyr, Skarner, the devils. Um basically running you at the speed of sound and taking doing more damage than you also taking no damage uh, obviously hecarim has been nerfed significantly since then uh turbo Kim tank has been nerfed significantly uh but that being said hecarim has much more interesting gank paths or at least less reactable ones so you know and good in team fights because the aoe fear very important the unstoppable into the aoe fear very po very very good right and kind of um, what um the chat's going on with the young could go crazy like i said i think a lot of pressure is gonna be a little bit on that young yeah absolutely um so so going to top lane uh volleybear is gonna have the pressure the whole time he with volleybear's shielding and being able to scrap and you know with the passive giving attack speed and the uh, match damage on hit uh, the split damage of Volibear is going to make it so that Shen is going to have to deal with that, and he's not going to be able to deal with it very well. Uh, Shen's going to be playing very low pressure, or sorry, low priority all game, going to be weak side. Um, that matchup is very hard, uh, especially if Volibear packs Conqueror or PTA, you know, very short trades and or long trades. It's going to be very impactful. Volibear is going to have, I think, a lot of pressure here. Um, that being said, Shen is going to be able to help his team globally way more. But, you know, in the times he doesn't have his, if he's forced into lane, it's going to be bad news bears for Shen. Okay. Loading. Bang. Bang. And as we are, so this is going to be the last game um, for tonight. We just did two games for each match. If you guys in the audience have any particular question that you guys would like to ask us in the post interviews, please feel free, please feel free to drop it in the Twitch chat and we will do our best to ask your question. Uh, in the meantime, Quinlan, make sure that everything is showing as needed on your end and you hit that smash that plus button. I'm smashing it. I'm smashing it. Give me your time span. Uh, 30. And, yep, oh, I'm on I time. Just got a couple of seconds. I'm on time. Getting all those scoreboards, objective timers. Did we get the ten minutes one? Um, ah. my well, I have the um scoreboard always showing for the most part, unless it's blocking part of the fight. So if anything, ah. we could go back to the vod, or we could borrow somebody well, we'll in the out. team. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fine. as we said, um, it's a classic five point events here. No one's, no one's having it. Ain't nobody having it. Just keeping um, the peace. <laughs> keeping the peace. Um, I think the mid lane. So I, I don't play either these champions, uh, Yon or Heimerdinger. But I think uh, if we saw last time, oh my God, they're training. They're training wards. That's adorable. This is camaraderie. This is sportsmanship. 
that we've never seen before. They're both giving up their vision so they can emo at each other. Um, so, so looking at the min lane here, um, it's it's looking like if if Eme can play at the very range, the very edge of the ranges that Heimerdinger has, it's gonna be very hard for Yon to actually make any trades. Yon's pretty good, uh, very good sustain. I don't think Heimerdinger is being able to poke Yon out, especially with Con well, yeah, maybe possibly with Conqueror, but Con not uh, fleet footwork. Potentially be able to poke him out uh, as the levels go on, but certainly I don't think uh, ideally that Yon. Oh, Elemental Lux already getting hit a lot. Sweet, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, uh, I don't think there's at any point where Shen can actually duel Volley Bear. So I like Heimerdinger. I've, I've played him quite a bit. Um, I think in terms of going against the oh, hold on, I want to stop for a second because we might have first blood. Uh, Sweet small suck is he's just looking for every first blood he can be in any game. Uh, he, he took he took the the level two power spike, potentially got the stun into the you know into the W combo. Very very simple, very very good. Um, but I think the Heimerdinger can actually handle you pretty well, um, as long as Heimerdinger can maintain that distance. Uh, Heimer has pretty good poke potential with Yon. I mean, what, Yon is a melee champ, so every single time you see him trying to get a CS, welcome! Go. Punish him for yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I agree. And it's being able to keep him, un like, unable to roam. I think it's very important. Uh, so a very interesting choice. We see... Um, we see Ignite coming from Eat May. I think he's, she wants uh, the kill pressure. And really trying to keep Yon from making impact plays by being up in experience, uh, just by at least killing him or you know forcing him out of lane with the dueling potential. So you play uh, Lilia, I don't. I have I've played Lilia. <laughs> Lilia top, a very fun. Uh, it's actually a very niche pick into in solo queue that we're seeing into tank top laners, because uh, tanks can't actually interact with her. So it's uh, very cool, very niche. Um, that being said, uh, Lilia Jungle is a shell of its former self. We're about to see maybe Ben JJ going into Rip Dusty. Uh, I don't think they have their cooldowns up, but you know, Rip Dusty doesn't really have the dueling potential and having pressure in both of his lanes, this is gonna really reduce Rip Dusty's ability to to make plays. Oh, that's a uh, ghost coming out from Ben JJ. Flash from Rip Dusty. Ben JJ might get the first blood here and first blood and assist go over to Ben JJ, very well done. Um, Lilia up down a level, and with Ben JJ having a combat summoner, it, it, at pressure from both lanes, y you can't be there. You can't be there is Rip Dusty. And I'm, I think I, this is good, good, really good to see, but look at that the vision. We're starting to see a little bit more vision coming from the Night Owls, and great yeah, response they're, they're, with they're, they're fighting way better. Yep. Uh, and Eme did exactly what she wanted to do. She had lane pressure. I'm Heimerdinger. I'm going to push this lane because I can, and I'm going to be able to rotate wherever Ben JJ needs me to be. So I think that's that worked out very well. Holy oh, it might be <gasps> a kill, kill, and bang! Sweet smell stuff <gasps> might die here. Ugh. Does die. They trade, but that denies all that experience to end from, from Element Deluxe. At least three more seconds worth of minions dying. Um, so that's both top laners flash. Uh, I think very well played. Sweep Smell Suck is gonna get is gonna get Leeching Lair. Uh, I never agree with getting Leeching Lair first. I think it's much better to get the Blasting Wand <gasps> and then build into the components nice. of Leeching Lair. But we missed Misfortune Bot killing Urshan Merchant. Yeah, so could... I actually had the the director camera on it, um, but Miss our uh, the Leona landed her stun onto them, and that kind of just allowed them to go ahead and. You know, do the thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, very good. So this is exactly like exactly what you were saying before is that Leona is 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 going to put the pressure on, like uh, way better than um than Morgana. Morgana needs to be very proactive and very good at hitting these. The lux. It's a lux. Right. No, I'm saying, but from Morgana from last game, oh. right? So Miss Fortune Bot <laughs> went from Morgana. Okay, that's. Shen ult did just come down, and blue team still the dragon with um, Eat May coming in, trying to do her best, but she's gonna 
she's probably gonna die right here. So that's exactly what I was talking about with, with Shen, right? Like, he can be wherever his team needs me to be, and even though he's down 20 CS already at six and a half minutes, and gonna be more uh, turret plates, um, this is something as, as red team that you always have to be constantly cognizant of. Um, the, um, I forget what it's called, Umbral Trespass? No, that's, that's Kanol. I forget. Stand United. I main Shen, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> used, to, used to anyway uh stand united really you know is gonna help out um you know very help out his team uh and so blue team got the dragon uh red team's still up in gold but uh yeah ben jj just started too early and there was a very good collapse very 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 coordinated collapse by a blue team shen r gets gets in and uh saves Saves, I believe it was Yone. Now, if we get back to stabilization, um, the Heimerdinger's down 10 CS, and it's now against a double buffed Yone. That does spell doom. Uh, Yone did pick up two kills there. Um, good Yone trade. Yone did pick up two kills. Yeah, good trade, but I think he may needed to have kited that better. Uh, maybe play a little bit further out of uh, auto range or at least Q range, but you know that's kind of exactly what you want to do. Every time I love Lucy is gonna engage on me, it's like no, I'm gonna put down turrets, I'm gonna stun you, and you're gonna be inside my triangle of doom, my Bermuda triangle. Uh, Draven, yes, good. Mid short bot, staying in pace. Uh, CS, you know, CS's uh, other than <gasps> top lane. I missed it. I. It's so, so much is happening. I keep missing it. I'll do in the future, boys. Don't you worry. But there was a, there's, you know, Eat, Eat May did get a kill onto I Love Lucy in Engage, but Lulia picked up, picked it up. Uh, Rift Dusty is now trying to hound the Rift Herald, but Ben JJ has got it. So he almost like has the pressure, all the pressure he needs. Uh, and he gets it, right? Yeah, I feel stressed for both teams. This one, this, this match is going back and forth. I have no idea who is in the lead or where they need to be at right now. <laughs> uh, so it's very important that Ben JJ now has Rift Herald, and that's at least 320 gold, right? Because if he punts it down, if the shell gets the charge, it's at least two. Oh, the bot lane play goes on. <gasps> nice uh, dodge. Archer Merchant brought very low. Draven, yes, good. Gets the ult off, but, you know, with being Misfortune Bot being down a level, gets the engage, but under turret takes turret shots and. With a disengage, could not disengage fast enough. Airy 95 and Urch Merchant clean yeah. them up. Very well done. A slight overstep by Nine Owls bot lane. I think that was a little bit unlucky. I think if Liliana hit her alt, her level six, that that fight would have gone a completely different direction. Rip Dusty is looking to make a play onto Sweet Small Suck. Sweet Small Suck has this. The shield's going to come down. It's it's not going to be enough. Ults away. Gets the health from the ult. Uh, Rip Dusty does not have Lilting Lullaby. Gets the stun. And Ben JJ is looking like he sees if he can try to make a, a cleanup. That's a flash by Rip Dusty. Ben JJ still wants it. Taunted. Now it's going to get. It's looking like it's going to be a double kill for Rip Dusty. Really turn. Uh, a ben JJ missing the ult, causing the flash, but, you know, took too much. Took a bit off more than he could chew. And, uh,. Getting a double kill for Rip Dusty. Rip Dusty having Mythic already, very important. Leandri's in Anguish, we're probably gonna see a Demonic Embrace next for double burn. Uh, and Demonic Embrace giving tank stats with, you know. Up to 20 armor and magic resist due to the passive. So it's, it's, it's looking uh, very good for Rip Dusty. Uh, it was a little shaky in the beginning, but you know, it's now, uh, it's now turning around. That being said, it's, you know, a 9K, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, 1.1K gold lead for, uh, nah. yeah, for <laughs> NAR, NA Rams. Um, it's looking like there's a four, four people bought on both sides. It's looking like red team's gonna disengage, look away. They don't want it quite yet. They want to fight when they know they can win. They're not gonna coin flip. Oh. They're not gonna coin flip ults. Uh, that's two also coming out. Misfortune bot could not get there in time to save Draven. Yes, good. Heat May uh, is getting 
slammed by I Love Lucy on the back end, but that's the long range advantage that we weren't talking about. So Urshan Merchant, Area 95, once they're outside the threat range of Tristana, Leona, it's gonna be, it's gonna spell curtains. Because every time they're gonna be poking them as they try to run away. And it's looking like that's what we're seeing right here. And it's looking like another dragon, Dragon 2, Cloud Drake into an Ocean Soul. Uh, potentially for the NA Rams. So, just like um, we're seeing commentators say, TNL looked like they were doing really well in the early game, but now it seems like it's slightly starting to crack a little bit. Not completely doomed quite yet. Never will be until that, you know, victory or the defeat screen has showed up. Um, where do you think the misstep to start gradually, you know, giving that almost 2k gold gap was? Uh, I, think, I think Ben JJ... Uh... Uh, I think Sweet Smell of Suck. I think instead of ulting out, he tried to make a fight in the top lane fight, and the one that ended up giving two kills uh, didn't help. Uh, with Ben JJ coming in, trying to trying to clean up with ult, missing ult, and then still trying to fight. I think this is just uh, a tale of uh, Ben JJ going for more than he uh, biting off more than he could chew, very consistently. Um, and you know he's only one and two, right? But you know junglers are very important, and uh, you know having your jungler down is you know cost them two two objectives, right? Like obviously it's more than more than just that, but it's it's important to say that you know uh, Ben JJ is trying to find these these flank patterns. Okay, I love Lucy going on Eat May. Uh, that's gonna be you know uh, Shadow comes down, Stan United does doesn't come through. Very killed. Rip Dusty gets the Lilting Lullaby onto Hecarim. It's gonna do a reasonable amount of damage. Holy! But Rip Dusty, oh! Heimerdinger turrets come out! And it's a two for one in the Night Owl's favor. So, very well done. Heimerdinger doing Heimerdinger things. Uh, yeah, come into my, uh, my damage zone. Please, I'm begging. Come into my Illuminati. Yeah, it's working out. Uh, looking top lane, a significant, a ridiculous gold lane. Uh, and you know it's it's looking like sweet small suck is just trying to make sure that elements lux is always disengaging from his fights uh you know sweet small suck is not having the kill pressure necessary because hecarim's elsewhere on the map but uh you know really trying to keep elements lux pressured under turret and half half health so even if he does ult he's gonna come in ult at a bad timing or you know bad amount of resources so that he cannot you know, make the uh, make the differences in the team for that needs to. Uh, Mythic coming out for Shen, so I believe on the next back, Sweet Smell Suck definitely has. He has 16 gold, 1600 gold in the pocket. That's enough. He only needs a thousand. Sweet Smell Suck. Uh, it's looking like he's getting engaged on. Ults away. I think that's the wise choice here, and that's a. Ridiculous amount of damage coming out from Leah here with just one Q. Um, ben JJ is going in on the bot, bot lane. Sweets, uh, Urchin Merchant and Aerie both force the flash. Heal comes out for uh, Urchin Merchant and he gets burned down anyway. Aerie 95 is trying to run, but I don't think they have the cooldowns. One for one down in bot lane. Uh, Draven, yes, good. None of these kills are going to Draven, yes, good. Like, he's been in a lot of fights, you know, he's got two assists. But that's not really enough. Uh, oh, no. Emei's in a bad position here. It's looking like Lilting Lullaby comes out. Uh, that's a very good stopwatch, but she doesn't have ult. And it's just going to call it a day. Yeah, they try to clear vision. And there's three people right there. Uh, there's no vision contestion uh, being contested in, in River. So you never know. Shelly, uh, the second Rift Shell is coming out. And uh, it's looking like Ban JJ. Potentially taking a lot of damage here. Not enough. The mid turret's gonna look down. Um, so, what do you what do you want to be seeing from uh, from from the bot lane of A Rams right now? Because it looks like they've just been sitting under turret. Like, what do you think they could be doing? Uh, like, what do you think their game plan should be moving forward? Oh, uh, I I think they've been. I think. The Tristana and the Leona have been doing a great job. I think the thing is the response. And, oops, sorry, I'm gonna. 
No, it's looking like Misfortune Botch is gonna get, uh, unfortunately trying to turn, but it's, you know, recognizing that, you know, E- Sorry, uh, Draven, yes, good, and E- May, recognizing that, yeah, we can't, we can't help you, and they're just gonna go back to their post and, uh, you know, just trying to burn as much time as possible. I think for the bot lane, at least from what I've been seeing, is for every engage that Tristana and Leona make an attempt to engage and get, you know, double kill on the Jin and Lulux, it's the responses of I love Lucy or the Lil Lilia or like the pressure of Shen that kind of stops them from being able to actually. Oh, Ben JJ is going in on Ursa Merchant. He's he's overstepped trying to get the Sandy Nana comes down, but it pops before Shen can get there. Littling Lullaby is going down onto Eat May. Eat May doesn't have stopwatch up ready, doesn't have Zonia's. Eat May dries, but that looks like it's going to be Red Team's. Uh, Red Team's third drink, so this is going to be a change from last game. There might be down 3k gold, but they have picked up uh, one dragon right here. So, very good awareness by Leona and uh, Dr Misfortune Bot and Ben JJ. Taking out and getting the shutdown, I believe. Merchant, merchant, I could be wrong. No, he did not have a, he did not have a shutdown. But very good shutting down and trying to keep him, uh, trying to keep him from getting as much gold and experience as he can. Very, very nicely done. I think a huge common theme, at least whenever I'm going to be casting, um, during this whole tournament thing, is just communication um, and kind of roaming together as a team and not being caught out and it's looking like there's gonna be a 2v2 sweet small sucker putting in a lot of damage uh immortal shubo is popped but ben jj does pick it up elemental lux already here doesn't have Sen united he's just he's just a taunt bot at this point rip dusty and that's a very good collapse by the night owls very very good collapse due to um, communication <laughs> due to communication exactly what you're saying so uh ben jj is actually from I think some of his earlier missteps, um, you know he's making good gank paths. He's uh, he, you know finding good uh, good uh, good routes, good paths uh, to to get in here. So I think it's uh, I think what he's doing is really you know I think becoming more and more clean as the game goes on. Uh, sweet smell suck. Uh, really trying to say, no this tower finally I could take it, and he gets it. Uh, that being said, uh, most teams are going to be, you know, resetting. Not much is happening here. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so at what point do you think Tristana? I don't know much about bot lane, but at what point do you think Tristana is going to be having the range necessary? Or like, I guess the items, like, do you know where the break point is when she's going to be able to, to be playing? Uh, like jumping into out, like obviously gold would help a lot, right? And experience would help well, a lot. Well, I but... think the reason why she can't really right now is just the Lux and the Jin combo is really good. There's so much lockdown potential there. Um, so I think that's why the Tristana can't really go knee deep into that. Um, especially if in the early game he, he makes an attempt to do that and it has been punishing him instead of rewarding. He's like, okay, I respect, I'm, re I'm respecting the lockdown that you guys have. I'm not gonna try right now. I think is where he might be right now. Uh, items itself, I couldn't tell you, sorry. <laughs> right, so yeah, I mean, this is looking like uh, Tristan's trying to uh, sweep and suck versus elemental Lux in top lane, but uh, it's looking like uh, at this point, it's it's turning around, so combat ult from Ooh. from Sweet Small Slugs coming in, but there's a TP coming in from Yone. It's looking like Sweet Small Slug is trying to trying to kill him before he can get out. Flashes away, but gets clipped by the corner of I Love Lucy's Yone ult. And uh, I think that was very well played by Elemental Lux, you know, saving his ult for the very last, uh, saving his flash to the very end. Uh, and Yone spending ult and TP to get that fight. With how much we've been seeing, uh, I guess, pressure from I smell so, uh, sweet smell suck um, it is score lines 131 he does have the most farm in game so that's good but you know he spent he is one of the higher death numbers in the game next to Eat May which he may have 
Had a lot of uh, pressure put. Oh my. Pressure put on her Sorry. this game. You were gonna say? Oh no, I, the um, Tristana almost got taken out of the picture because of the amount of CC. Oh, Stanny Nana comes out, finds Shen. Um, ben JJ is still gonna ult in onto Urshan Merchant. The rest of the team's not there. He cannot finish. I love Lucy's just taking care of the back line. Drowsy comes out, gets the root, and it's just, it's just that Yone was dealing with the back line of the Night Owls, and the taunt comes through. Draven Yeska does jump away, does get the Gale Force, and dies to rip Dusty anyway. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a trickle-in fight where Miss Fortune Bot's looking like next. They're diving under turret. They don't care. Uh, it's looking like we might save her. She lives one little bit more. The gold difference is looking five, five K at this point. Very significant. Yone, Yone comes again. It's looking like Miss Fortune Bot's going to fall. Eat me, uh, trying to hold back the time, but it's just one Heimerdinger. And she pops the stopwatch, which actually might have hurt her. Nope. Oh! Puts down a lot of damage. Ben JJ is looking to see. Maybe you can clean up here. Lila Lucy is going to be next. The uh, Sterix Gage was popped. Uh, Draven Yes Good's in there. Gets the double hop. Gets the ult. Doesn't get the kill. Eat me, and Ben JJ cannot follow up. Just doesn't have the damage yet. And the. The. Uh, the. Oh, Ben JJ gets the unstoppable onslaught. Uh, Ripped Dusty gets the E, flashes away. It's looking like they're trying to catch up to Elemental Lux. Elemental Lux is walking away. He's looking for the run. But uh, Rip Dusty is low. He can't seem to fight quite yet. But uh, what really hurt Draven Yesgood right there is that he was trying to fight and uh, attach or stack the the bomb charge when Shen's W, the counter strike was up or the dodge field or whatever you call it. I forget. I mean the character, I think once April whole <laughs> season. I forget what the name's called. That was it's looking like they're trying to burst it down. <gasps> and blue team steals it. Airy 95 steals it. No Huge. smite needed. Huge. Huge. That is not soul point, but Oh, Yon oh ult gets in, gets a three-man Yon Oh, Shen no. Is, Shen's on the back end. Shen gets the taunt onto uh, Ime. Ime goes down. Uh, Draven, yes, good. And Sweet Smell Suck are just trying to disengage. Get away. So this is... So... Um, Miss Fortune Box looking like next. Uh, Draven, yes, good. Has a jump. Oh. No, doesn't. Urchin Merchant does not miss. And it's looking like curtains here for the Night Owls. Oh man, I feel like the Night Owls hasn't had a real 5v5 in like the past five minutes. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, they, they have a really good 5v5, but with Yone's ability to split the fight, uh, it's, it's actually really coming in clutch where I Love Lucy is, gonna be, is able to split team fights, get on the back line. Either it doesn't matter if he kills them or, you know, it just focuses fire on him. He zorps back with the whatever it's called, Yone things. Um, and, you know, it really splits up so, you know, people, it's not like a concentrated effort from all five, uh, five people of the Nine Owls. Lilting Lullaby Stick comes off. down on Ime. Ime just chooses to... Oh. Oh, still gets knocked down by Air 95, the range difference. Ben JJ is going on Air 95, gets the kill. Steric Skate just Does not have the He's team to follow up, one away. Yone has to go. Yone is now in the middle of three of them. Yone, uh, gets... Kill. Sweet Smells like trying his best. Draven Yesgood and uh, and Miss Fortune Bot on the retreat, but it's not like they can lock in the Iron Storm line. The heal comes out, but it's not enough. Elemental Lux is trying to get the taunt, misses it. Urchin Merchant gets the root, and it's looking like Draven Yesgood dead, and that might be the game ending play for game two of week one of season one of Wombo East. I know. I'm setting my energy. It ain't over until that victory or defeat screen is up. Uh, Not yet. I don't know. So, no, no. No, no. I'm just gonna call it here. I it, it looks. Listen, Heimerdinger Heimer is holding holding the door. Ooh, Elmer Taking Cole. out the Shen. Look at that. Oh, down. look at that. Shen is dead. Shen is gone. What are you gonna do? Yep. 
Nope. Run and don't. Run them down. Grab the booty. Uh, they lose the bot tier, bot inhibitor turret as well. Uh, like this. Uh, every member, I believe, Urchin Merchant has roughly three k gold to spend right here on his next back. Uh, and so that's what he's gonna choose to do. He spends, you know, two hundred and seventy of it. Or, oh, not all of it, and you know, picks up is uh, pretty much another full item worth of stats, and uh, it's looking good for NA Ram here. Call me an optimist, but one oopsie, little... and they could turn this around. I no uh, no I no 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 I no no listen listen listen. It's gonna, no, 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 listen, gonna take a lot. Listen. So HXC. <laughs> listen, Stop. young grasshopper. <laughs> Their base might be a little bit open and might be a little, a little hurt. At this point, I, I, I think it would be a mistake to go for a back door. I think it'd be much wiser to to rather just play standard and then... Oh, and look, I love Lucy in, in the back line seat. I love Lucy's ability to, to split right there. Very, very pivotal. Uh, no one, all five members of Nine Owls still alive, still kicking. You know, they still have to, you know, pressure for bot lane. A pick push is coming out. So this is what they're saying. They you know, they have vision of all of them because the sweepers not up. Uh, they don't have blue uh, control wards picked down. And as they see Night Owls retreat, the NA Rams looking to move forward, potentially take Baron here. Uh, Baron's being slowly trickled down. Uh, Ben JJ comes in. Barely, oh. it's still at 6k. They don't have the vision of, uh, Ben JJ Sterks pops. He's still fighting. Um, who gets it? Lilia gets the Baron Nasher, so it's all stuff. It's going, going in. He just doesn't have the damage yet, and this is looking like a, a clean ace for the, the Night Owls into, from the, the NA Rams. Oh. Draven, yes, good. Living with one health. Dies. And that's game oh, two. I think if you just the waited... First a, match ever. I think if you just waited a little bit more, because the whole team was not there, maybe they could have turned that around. But I'm believing it's not over yet. No! Okay, now it's over. <laughs> and there it is. The first match of the first season. The first week. I don't know. All this, one movie sports, yeah, inaugural Woo! match, Woo, let's go. Woo, 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 woo. Now, everyone in the comments, uh, interviewers are about to, about to be, you know, go underway. So if you would, wouldn't mind, if you have any questions, please do put them down in the chat. We'll, we'll ask them if they're appropriate, of course. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking for all the people to come into the casting chat and ask them a few questions. In the meantime, I've got the graph showing up. If there's anything in particular that you wanted to further discuss or look at. Excellent. Um, yeah, so looking at the damage here, Eme also topping the charts again. Um, or, you know, for, for her team. Very, very strong. Uh, constantly putting out damage. Maybe not enough to kill, but like very much to, to, to make it happen. The... The very the the odd part is not Urshan Merchant this game, but Rip Dusty with the most amount of damage. Ooh, Leah, when she gets off the ground, turns out she just does all AOE abilities. Neat. That's neat. Ah, uh, all right. Hello and welcome. It's uh wonderful to have you all here. You know, it's this is the first interviewee, the interview of. Wombo Esports in actuality. No, this isn't scrims. This is the real business here. Um, excited to have you guys here. So uh, I guess we will start with just a very easy, uh, very easy start point. It's the pick bands. Um, so I just want to talk about uh, NA Rams first three picks, uh, just securing both bot laners and the jungler first. Um, you know, just trying to get that point of the map. Why was that important to you for NA Ram? Uh, 
I just want to ask like whoever was in charge of, of pick man. I just want to I just want to know and understand like why those were such high priority picks for you first game game one. Um. Well, we wanted to pick away the Thresh first off. So if they didn't first pick it, we were gonna pick that and most likely an ADC. And then since we didn't have anything showing for mid or anything like that, we just I just decided I'll just pick Trundle. Pretty good right now and. Uh, I knew that the Echo was already jungle, so I just wasn't worried about counter matchup too much because it's kind of even-ish, I guess. So, Is there um, the... so so seeing your matchup, you thought that you could just blind pick Trundle and anything. Is there any specific picks that you would like, you know, like that would be really good into Trundle? Not that I I just don't know the matchups myself. Trundle's not a top laner. Uh, I mean, jungle matchups don't matter as much as lane matchups in general, but right, like. If you don't really want to pick Trundle, if like you end up the other enemy team ends up having a bunch of dashes, because then your pillar is useless. So, all right, all right. I picked I it early, you. and I wasn't too worried about going versus the Echo, just because it's like I said, it's pretty even. So, all right, both teams actually secured a uh, secured their bot lane and jungle the first three, and you know they got the counter pick for both of their lanes. Um, you know, you know, got the the opposite pick for both of their lanes. So, um, so you, you banned Draven and Swain. I understand. So, Asol was a, a nothing ban. So, can you explain to me uh, the Fizz Mordekaiser and then going into the Malzahar Orn? I just want to understand like uh, where you thought your strengths were in the matchup or in the team comp and what you needed at that point. Um, I'd seen that. He may was playing, had played a bunch of Fizz lately. So I figured just get rid of the AP Assassin. And then we know that Suck plays um, Mord, at least. Or at least he has some games on it. And Mord can be pretty disruptive if he were to ult one of the members. So we get rid of the Mord then as well. And then Malzahar's just comfort for Lucy. And then Shane had said he wanted her uh, Lux said that he wanted a tank top lane and we figured Warren would be good to go for picks as well as like with the Thresh and the Trundle Pillar and the Malzar. So we were kind of going for a pick slash team fight with that. Right. All right. Excellent. Uh, makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I just wondered, um, so the Fizz, just the, the Fizz band was it just like, I just don't want to see it kind of thing. Yeah, it was more that may, I saw that may had played some games on it. And we just didn't want to play versus it, I guess. Yeah. Well. So it wasn't fishy. Evanek. <laughs> not, not for Evanek. <laughs> uh, moving on to the other side, let's let's go into uh, let's go into the you know Night Owls draft. Uh, I don't know who is in charge of that, so I'm going to just unmute both of the Night Owls that are in here. Uh, so I was just wondering, so. Um, uh, so you also secured jungler and, uh, bot lane. Can you just, uh, explain to me like in the first three picks and bands, uh, why those were highly contested for your team? Yeah. I mean, obviously urchin merchant is a very strong player. Um, so we wanted to try to put him at least a little bit off comfort though. After game one, we realized that that wasn't a good strategy. Um, so we we threw a bunch of bands at him. We also just kind of looked across the board. Um, we weren't entirely sure what Shane was going to be playing. Or excuse me, Elemental Lux was going to be playing top. Um, we knew that uh, Ari um, had a diverse enough champ pool that we couldn't really go after her. Same for Dusty. Um, and you know, and for mid lane, the biggest pick that we were worried about was the Echo. Um, it's a pick that. While I haven't played it a lot recently, it's a pick that I used to play a lot, like a year or two ago. And so I just, it was comfort for me um, getting back into jungle after not playing it for a little bit. So we just opted to toss three bands at ADC, try to push Urchin off of comfort, um, and then, uh, you know, grab the Echo blind, hoping that, um, you know, we we're just going to be able to scale up and be able to look for fights off right, of it. Right, right. Um, so going to the second half of the thing, uh, the Timo and Yon ban, um, 
with Garen and Oriana. I just want to understand, like, so I understand Oriana, a great enabler and great team fighter, but what was the idea behind Garen uh, when he has, I think, from what I understand, lackluster, uh, you know, competitive results or I guess like utility for the team. Uh, not that we've seen him, that that we haven't seen him with great effect before, but I just wanted to see like why the Garen was was picked here by either Sweet Smell Suck or Venge. We chose Do Garen. You... It was a comfortable uh, champion that I'm used to. Into I can play it into decent matchups across the board. So we didn't know. I don't think we knew the Orn at the time, but I was confident that I could at least go even or potentially win lane a little bit to help team. Yeah, and it definitely worked out, uh, at least the, the the lane part for sure. Um, and you know, we saw it, so that's that's very good. Um, so HXC, uh, if you have any questions uh, for draft, then we can get into the real game because there's some, uh, some people have a, a, a question for, for Rip Dusty <laughs> in the chat. I think we all know what it is, but if, they, if you have anything more to ask before we get to that spicy business, um, I would love to. I currently do not have any drafts any further for, or pff, questions for the draft. Right. Right. Excellent. So, as we saw, that game was, uh, it was pretty even until it all really wasn't for the game one. Um, I really just want to know, Rip Dusty, you should feel bad. It's it's not like I want to know. I'm just telling you, you should feel bad. The first, you know, it could have been game one, Penta, and there, you just, you had it. It's, I'm, I'm sad. You've made me sad. You've made everyone in the chat sad. How, Urchin Merchant, I just got to ask you, how do you feel, buddy? If, you, uh, if you're unmuted, if you if you want to talk. Because I, I want to know what's going through your head. Well, um, you know, I was quite, uh, I wasn't ex exactly going for the Penta at first, you know, just go for a win. But then I saw it, and uh, you know our good friend the troll uh, <laughs> did his duty as the troll king, and uh, he took it. Darn, you know, like, in good heart though. You know, he was just it, trying uh, to save their ADC's life. I think uh, we were more so, you know, anticipating some rage coming from you. Like, come on, just like, argh, like really get yeah, it out there. Up. This is where, where storylines are, you know, this is where well, the, the drama, drama yeah, happen. the tea. Oh, yeah, um, yeah the ABC and the chat. A petition in chat to uh, revoke our captain for a new one. Yes, that's oh, what we want. This is the coup, this is the talking about. Oh, it all comes together. Oh, no. <laughs> and changing our name to the Quinlan Premier League immediately. Yes! Oh, okay. No, no. That's where I dropped the line. <laughs> but uh, in all serious, you. all serious business, um, game one, you know, it's, that's all I got for game one. Uh, it doesn't look like any more questions in the chat. Um, uh, vote ban the Penta Stealer. Ooh, I don't know. The Qu <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know. There, there might be a hole public uprising against you guys so you guys gotta watch your backs here the the people might turn against you the crusade begins indeed um that being said let's move on to game number um much closer game uh so i guess i'll start with the night owls first here uh tristana leona heimerdinger which i really enjoy the heimerdinger uh if we can do the first half again if you can let me know the first half of the pick band phase, could you could you walk uh, me through it? Yeah, yeah. So um, we I need to pull it back up. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we we were talking about um, uh, Draven was really pushing for a uh, Hecarim pick to try to be able to get backline access onto Urchin so that Urchin can play and scale up. Um, we were a little concerned about the Jin coming through um, and our ability to play uh, weak side late game scaling. Obviously, we saw like a bit of a punish on that, um, but not overly so. They were actually able to play that lane like decently. Um, so we once we saw the Jin, we looked for. Um, we knew that we couldn't play the weak side, so we just looked for a lane that had a decent all in potential at level two, and then. Um, you know, uh, from there, uh, once we saw the Yone, um, May was very comfortable with a counter pick for the Heimerdinger into the Yone, so we just took comfort. Excellent. Um, going to the second half of the draft here, 
Uh, it's going to be a J4 Orn ban. I understand those. Uh, going into Volibear, Hecarim. So uh, you've already kind of explained the Hecarim, the backline access. Uh, Sweet Small Suck, uh, what, you know, again, you're blind picking into the enemy team. Uh, you didn't choose Garen again. You chose Volibear. Uh, what was going through your mind there? I'm going to be real with you. This this one wasn't really my choice. Um, okay. <laughs> Draven was really pushing for Volibear so I could just jump in and have a decent engage along with Hecarim so we can just try and like wombo combo the old Jin and ADC. And then I've played a couple games on Hecarim, or not Hecarim, uh, Volibear, so I was like, okay, I'll try it. I'll just play safe, don't have to worry about landing phase, but it turned out all right. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I've I played Shen and Volibear. It's it's hard, and you had priority, you know, for the first, like, 10, 15 minutes. So I think it really worked out a very good, uh, very good showing. Uh, Rip Dusty is uh, asking about the AP build instead of a Divine Sunderer build. Um uh, it, you know, your team wasn't light on AP. I guess you know Heimerdinger. If you didn't believe in Heimerdinger, but like, what was what was the reason going behind the? I mean, I've I've definitely seen Rift Maker Volibear before, but yeah, I've only seen uh, Divine Hunter on Volibear. But this all comes back to Draven. <laughs> Draven <laughs> was telling me in picks that AP Volibear just completely like disregards Shen's armor. I, get, I don't really know how Shen works. Or uh, yeah, he has the the dodge yeah. circle, right? And so he he can't be hit by auto attacks, but you you know your you know lightning storm still affects it. So that's that's probably what he's talking about. Yeah. So he was just telling me that it's better into the matchup. So I gave it a shot. Yeah. All right. So hey, very adaptable. That's what we love to see. Uh, moving back to the NA Rams. Uh, for your team, if you could just walk me through pick ban, and I'm trying to find where it is. Oh, hey, there it is. Found it. Um, walk me through game two, because uh, I don't think there's any big questions, but I just want to know like what the thought process was, I guess, to, to elucidate me. Um, So, considering we had first pick and they didn't ban Jin, I don't know if Draven plays Jin. We just first picked it so we could get... Uh... Urging on to that. And then they pick their Tristan and Leona. And we were kind of debating what, uh, with Ari, what she wanted, as well as with Urgent. And then they both decided Lux, which, I mean, came in handy because she stole two dragons in the last game. And then Yon was just comfort for Lucy, pretty much. And I said, if you wanted to get, I told him if he wants to go with the AD, I can play Lilia. And bring in a little more AP than just Lux. And then bands are the same as the first game. <clears throat> uh, right. Second half, I mean, I know Ben plays Kindred, and then I think it was Lux, and someone else said that he has played Viego before, or has I Viego have games. Never played Viego <laughs> in my entire oh, life. Well. Uh, but Shane, for some reason, sorry, excuse me, Elm. man, I'm doxing all over the place. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thinks that I do for uh, for some reason. I actually have zero oh. mastery. Either way, they called for it, so we <laughs> just went with the Viego ban. And then, uh, like I said, I was picking the Lilia anyhow. And then, since they had already picked Volibear, uh, Lex wanted to play tank while also being um, being able to help out the team, so we picked up Ben. Makes sense to me. Uh, so, HXC, if you've got any more questions about pick ban. Um, I uh, You can go ask them now. I do not. Sorry. I Excellent. Did. Okay. Uh, you know, I I guess uh, my question to, to the Night Owls, um, and I guess the only subs... Uh, what was I just want to know what the adjustment you were trying to make and something that I saw personally and what you think of the statement I'm about to ask is or about to say is like you know the vision game in one was I think terribly cited in the NA Rams favor uh, what did you guys do to adjust because it looked really like you did absolutely um, I was just wondering you know what what was your thought process going into the next game and like how you're trying to adapt game by game so I think um 
Misfortune Bot would be able to speak to this a little bit more, obviously, as uh, one of the support players, but I think there's three big factors. The first is that Misfortune Bot's on a tank, able to push up a little more safely for solo vision. Um, we saw me get picked repeatedly on the Echo in Gabe 1 when I tried to push vision lines, uh, just over and over again. Um, and uh, so, you know, the, the ability to have somebody that can walk up. We also had a fairly quick um, collapse with the potential of the Hecarim. Uh, and even like just on jump, able to give, um, you know, at least pushing for bot lane and drag vision early. But then secondly, we were able to have the Heimerdinger in mid lane, which will often give you a lot of early prio, which lets us push in for deep wards into the enemy jungle. And then finally, just um, Hecarim is able to have pretty unique paths in, so you could play around known vision a little bit better. Right, yeah, it, I, I think that's exactly what I was seeing. Um, I, I think the second game was way more back and forth. Um, so I, I really like the adaptations that were said or that were done. Um, I really wish, you know, more of your team was here. I was, was going to ask about the, the Heimerdinger pick. Like, is that a comfort pick? Uh, is, is you know, it, it's looking like high damage mid lane coming from Eat May both games. But she's not here. But uh, I yeah, have... I I, I can comment briefly on it just because she talked about it in pick ban a little bit. It is specifically a, a comfort pick into the Yone matchup for her. So it's something that we flagged the Yone as a potential um, risk in both games. And both games she was ready to pick Heimerdinger into it um, both times. So it's it's a matchup that she favors. Um, just, you know, Heimerdinger into melee matchups, right? Like Yeah, and there's a bunch of... Same. Yeah, Heimerdinger into melee matchups for sure. <laughs> um... It's comfort for more jumpy matchups, crowd control. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I assume that's you, Eat May, in the in the chat. Appreciate you coming back in wherever you can. So that's good to see. I have no more questions, so I think we go into the the absolutely illustrious last part here. Uh MVTs. MVPs. I always ask uh we're this is the the standard now is to ask the captain or whoever the spokesperson for your team who do you think was the mvp for the enemy team for the series or each game if you wish uh starting with the na rams mvps what you got i mean i feel like i have to give it the urge and at least for game one i think lucy played really well in the yon in game two and other team. i did already other team. i'm sorry other team. So I oh, guess you could do. I thought we were doing both. I thought we were doing both. You could do both. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. If, it's okay if you do both. It's fine. You've already started. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm okay with people yeah. passing up their own team. Uh, <laughs> moving on, I guess. Um, definitely have to shout out the two subs for them, and also Lux for subbing for us. Um, on short notice, uh, at least so we can get our games played. But I would say in game one, um. I would have to give it to the Garen, I believe, because he was splitting a good bit, and we had to respond to that a lot. Um, game two, Ben was very uh, disruptive in the team fights, and there's not really much you can do with Hecarim when he's unstoppable. So, I would say those are MVPs for the enemy team. Excellent. Uh, switching it over to the other side, uh, the MVPs. For you could you could do every both both teams MVPs since we've already started. Sure, um, both teams. Huh? Uh, I mean, I would also toss it over to uh, Sweet Smell Suck on that Garen uh, game one, um, and then um, I think uh, either between him or May on the Heimerdinger for game two. Both of them played really well despite a ton of jungle pressure from Rip Dusty. Um, and as far as the enemy team goes, um, you know, I think Urchin Merchant, uh, probably MVP for game one, and Rip Dusty, MVP for game two. Just absolutely took over the game. Right oh, right oh. Uh, and that's, that's it for me. And if you guys, if anyone else has any other questions or anything they want to say to each other, uh, time is now. If not, I'm ready to pack it all and get on out of here. 
Yep, so as the final thing, we always like to give the opportunity for either each team member or whoever. Um, thanks for joining the post or game interviews. If there's anything that you'd like to say to your team, the other team, uh, anybody watching, and of course, want to give a big thanks, um, as already stated, to the three subs that came into play. Um, to the night owl, rest of the team who's not in this call, went off and go went to enjoy your Sunday night. Um, I know it was kind of rough to have two of your key players not in the match um but hopefully um i did take a look week six na rams and the night owls will be matching off again so hopefully we can see a true um match between the two teams but again thank you guys for kind of taking it up um for week one and being our opening game so uh i heard there's a eulogy for the pentakill tomorrow yeah, honestly, someone should, someone, <laughs> yeah, that's not okay. What, Roof Dusty did? Not okay. But, uh, yeah. I Anyone would else? say GG's, and uh, we'll be putting out an application for our new captain for the NA Rams uh, <laughs> starting tomorrow. So if you would like to be our new captain, you know. <laughs> if you want a jungler that's significantly worse than your jungler, you know. <laughs> What's well, sorry? I was going to say, good luck finding a jungler. <laughs> just, just saying, yeah. can we get like records for like objective steals? Uh, you know that that's a lot of. Uh huh. We're gonna really get right on that and really. Yeah. I mean, it's not that hard, right? I'm gonna write. I'm gonna five. write that on my sticky note and then stick it under my desk. How about that? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, like having two lux uh, stealing, like lux stealing two dragons in one game. That's that's a pretty big feat. Not gonna lie. No. Yeah. Absolutely, got you. Uh, don't uh, have the energy for that. Yeah, you, you know what? If you want to do that, you want to be a homie and do that for the whole rest of the season for every single game and match. Hey, that's my boy right there. <laughs> what if I cast at them? <laughs> hey, it's hey, even better. I'll send you a cupcake. <laughs> One unit cupcake. And I know how cupcakes work in League of Legends. It won't be expressed. Traps. So Traps. Could arrive moldy by the time you get it. But all right, looks like uh, that's all that we got for today. So thank you, Quinstone slash Quinlin for joining me and being our main caster for today. Love the hype, love the energy. Thank you, Rip Dusty, for put, putting together that first um, video that we showed to really kick off the season. Thank you, both teams. That was fire. Yes, very fire. Um, actually had fire in it. <laughs> Um, thank you all who joined us for today's match. Thank you both teams for being our opening game and looking forward to the rest of the matches for the Wombo Esports. And again, as a reminder, our next match is this Tuesday, 9 p.m. EST, you'll plays versus the Coconut Crabs. <laughs> Coconut Crabs. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> and then the last match for week one will be Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, Glazed Non-Human Primates versus the Knights. Uh, with that, thank you guys. If you have a long weekend because of Labor Day, have a great long weekend. If not, best of luck on your Monday. <laughs>